name is Yolant Joseph. I graduated in 2005 from the Department of Creative and Festival Arts. My major was musical arts. Music was always part of my life. My father was loved music, classical music. So every day at six o'clock, the TV would be turned off and he would always have lovely music, um, classical music being played in the house from six to seven p.m. When it was news time, the TV went to news. So I always grew up somehow with Sometimes it's not only the classical music, things like Hooked on Classics, Miriam McKeever, James Last Orchestra, that's the kind of music my father would play. So it was in me even before I was aware. And so from the time I was um, young, from at Micropa Girls RC, I was involved with the school's choir with anything with music. When I went to St. Joseph's Convent, I really began to study music seriously. I studied the piano, I was with the recorder, head of the guitar um, club. And of course, I have to thank Daphne Crawford who is now deceased, my piano teacher, and Greta Taylor, who was my choir mistress at St. George's Convent, for nurturing that love for music. So by the time, and then I did music at A-levels, which wasn't really very popular in those days. GC did have music at A-levels. Few of us did it. And um, I knew that somehow music would have been part of my, my life, my future. I, however, chose to teach, because teaching and music sort of, you know, they, 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 they blend nicely together. So I did my, um, my teacher's diploma at Varsity Teachers College, but again, there was music everywhere at the college. So even though I graduated as a teacher, I was still pretty much involved in music. So when UE was offering these scholarships to music teachers in 2001, um, my principal sort of encouraged me, why don't you just try, you never know. And I was fortunate to receive the scholarship. My music degree is my life because I have been a teacher of music at this school in particular, which is Diamondville Government Primary School for the last 20 years. I have always taught music, even when I wasn't here. I taught it at some level, be it at church level. Um, even at my past primary schools that I initially taught at before coming here, which would have been St. Teresa's, Micarapo Girls. I was always involved at Digger Martin Girls as well, RC. I was always involved in music with the school. But in this case, I'm teaching it officially. I teach all of the classes at the school here, from first year infants to standard five. I teach them music only and anything related to music. So that is pretty much anything that the school does in terms of concerts, graduations, shows, anything at all. I find myself having to be involved. It has impacted my life in many ways. One, I had some skills, particularly like in the pan. So having to major, using the pan as my major instrument at Creative Arts, I was forced to learn to arrange the pan. I was forced to, to get to know the pan in a very intimate way. So now that I am here working with the parents, it feels almost like it's just home, an extension of a hobby, as opposed to work. The way that they stretched us at Creative Arts, particularly Mr. Murray, Dr. Osborne, Mr. Headley, Mr. Sharma, we had the best. And they stretched us, they made us raise the bar as high as we can in terms of striving for excellence. And I find that I still continue in my work every day to try to achieve that excellence and I'm very proud to have been a graduate of that part. The room we are in, I know the camera will pick up, pick up bits and pieces. This is basically where I work every day, this is the music room. And I really feel, I have to say this publicly, I feel it's an honour to work in this music room because many of my colleagues work on their step or work in a little room where they have to unpack pans every time they have to use them. So I, I do value the fact that I have a functioning room where I can teach in one section and I can have the pans set up permanently. In the background, you see some students in red jerseys. Those are the Diamond Vale members of the Diamond Vale Youth Steel Ensemble. Say hi, guys. Hi. Okay, back to normal. <laughs> Good. And these students, um, they are very precious because most of them started their education right here at Diamond Vale as first to infants with our music program at school. And by the time they were like age eight or so, nine years old, they started playing for the Diamond Vale Government Primary Steel Ensemble that I directed. Um, many of them are like um, 17, 18, they've finished CXC. Some of them are actually about to start university. And as you can see, they're still here because they got exposed to the pan. They love, absolutely love the pan. They live for pan, many of them. And they refused to stop when they were finished in Standard 5. So we were forced to continue with the ensemble. And now they are ready to move on to university and many of them are still here. Because I think they have recognized the importance that music has played in their life and how, how beautiful the steel pan is as an instrument 
to use. So what you find is that any opportunity they have to play, any, like for instance, I called them very last minute for this interview, and they were all here. You know, nobody even said much, no miss. They were like, okay, what time we be here? Um, we were very fortunate to have taken them to Scotland, Aberdeen International Youth Festival in 2010. And we went and we represented not just Trinidad and Tobago, but the Caribbean. We were the only Steel and Sound. We were the youngest group there, and we were certainly the only group from the Caribbean. And they wowed audiences. We left people begging for more. And we have been invited every year since to attend. But we didn't have enough money. It's like half a million dollars. So we had to each time refuse. But um, this is a bunch of students that are a lovely example for other youths who want to do something positive with their lives through music. And I don't know what's going to happen now that some of them are going off to university. We are losing a couple key players, but I know with their spirit, they will find a way for us to continue. One of our past fan peoples is hoping to start a certificate. I would say to them, first of all, don't just focus on one instrument, try to to use the opportunity to acquire as many skills and as much, as much knowledge in as many instruments and genres as you can. So wherever the elective subjects that you can learn a new instrument, I would say to run with it. I would also say to them to widen their base generally, even before going in, see how much music they can listen to, see how much knowledge they can gain so that they can bring that knowledge to their new experience. I'll also say to them that while they're there, use their time wisely, okay? In terms of even preparing for their exams, preparing for their assignments, use the time wisely because many of them will not be working. They'll be full-time students. So there's no reason why they can't all graduate at the top of their class. I would love to make sure that every child that leaves Diamond Vale is fully aware of their musical ability, would have um, being able to experience and develop their skills to the best level that they can. And I'm hoping that in the future, when my job here is done, that a past Diamond Vale student can be the person to take over this music program. And even as, as the youth ensemble is functioning, I'm hoping that some of them will be able to come back and gift to Diamond Vale as well, even on an after-school basis, teaching pan, giving the children, inspiring them, working with them, so that they too could have the opportunity to be excellent musicians as these are. I am an FHE alumni, making impressions in my community, society, region, and beyond. Join us and make your stamp.